Continuing our demonstration, contact tracing and follow-up is closely linked to the case-based surveillance program. On the right side of the screen, you will notice a small box labeled Relationships. We can use this in order to register contacts associated with our index case. If I select Add next to the Relationships heading, I can follow the prompts to register or create a link between the index case and a new contact. Note that while I am doing this, I am going to select the contact registration and follow-up program in order to add my contact. After selecting the program, I can either search and select for an existing contact that has already been registered, or I can register a new contact into this program and link it to my index case. Let us register a new contact. We are registering the contact using the same process as for our case-based surveillance program, as we may need to potentially follow up with this contact later on. After selecting register, I can proceed to enter the details of my contact. After entering the details, I can click on save. You can now see that this person has been added to the relationships box to indicate that the contact we have registered is now linked to our index case. I have gone ahead and added some additional contacts to demonstrate that as many contacts as required can be added and linked to the index case. We can move over to the contact registration and follow-up program to get a more detailed overview of this program by selecting one of the contacts that we have already registered. When we select this contact, you can see they are not yet enrolled in the case-based surveillance program. However, under the heading Other Programs, we can see that they are registered in the Contact Registration and Follow-up Program. We will select this in order to continue. The Contact Tracing and Follow-up Program includes two discrete processes outside of linking the contact to the index case. Note that I can still see which index case this contact is linked to on the right side under the Relationships heading. In this program, we have separate processes for initial follow-up and symptoms assessments. Note that the follow-up process can also be assigned to a user so they can filter out those cases which they need to follow up on. The initial follow-up only has a few variables and includes some logic like we have seen in the case-based surveillance program. This logic has been applied to the Exposure Assessment section. Based on the response, different information will need to be entered. The information being collected here is based on WHO guidance, as is the case in our case-based surveillance program. There is also a separate process for symptoms assessment. This has been separated as it allows for this assessment to occur multiple times. For example, the first time the assessment is performed, the contact might not exhibit any symptoms. The next time this is performed, however, if they do have symptoms, a number of related fields will appear that allow you to enter which symptoms that you are seeing. In the event they do have symptoms, they may need to be further examined and monitored using the workflow available in the case-based surveillance program. We can take this contact and register them into the case-based surveillance program. I can do this by scrolling up to the top, changing over to the case-based surveillance program, and selecting Add New. Any details that have already been entered will be automatically populated. We can fill in any additional information we might have, then proceed to register this case. Now this case is registered, 
both in the contact registration and follow-up program, as well as the case-based surveillance program. We can utilize the workflow of this program for this contact similar to how it was discussed for our original index case. The advantage of having these programs together in one system becomes clear pretty quickly, as both workflows can be readily utilized depending on how the case and its contacts present themselves during their assessments. In the last part of our three-part demonstration, we will discuss some of the analysis outputs that we have made available as part of this package.